Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I install a new hard drive to my Synology DS1815+. Plus. I love this network attached storage, also known as a NAS. It allows me to save all of my files and all that um, onto a hard drive that is stored here, which I then go to Amazon Glacier and back up off-site. It costs me about $15 a month, um, but overall it's an amazing machine. I'm going to show you how I am expanding it. I am expanding this NAS uh, with over about 12 terabytes worth of data. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do it and go into uh, the DSM, which is the uh, front end GUI on how you access your network detached storage. And when I show you the GUI, I want you to understand that you can also access it via mounted drive on your computer um, without you know being tethered to it. So as you can see, my hard drive is completely on, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and open this box up. I bought it off of Amazon, and it's really great because I actually bought a used hard drive, and it was a little bit less expensive than uh, one of the drives that came with it. So it is the HGST WD Ultrastar DC HC520 12 terabyte hard drive. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, so it's in this box here. And it came with this wire. And here's the hard drive, okay? This is the hard drive that it comes with. Um, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just uh, put it into this machine. I have a curio cabinet that I actually opened up here so that you know it, the air could flow. I want it somewhere that was central around my house, so that's why it's here. I have my uh, UPC down here as well, but up here it's all dishes and stuff. Um, so you can see I can put my hand through here and then above it's glass, okay? So I just put it down here just because I wanted to hide the ugly, if you will, um, and then just be able to kind of access it when I needed to. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this door. And you can see all of the lights are green here and this is a drive that I'm gonna put it in, okay? Four little ones at home and so I <laughs> forgot that I used the key to lock this. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it. Okay, so I went ahead and unlocked it. Now it's opening. Hopefully you guys see that. Woo, it is dusty. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that off. And all I'm gonna do is slide this in. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear all that dust off. I mean, I should use a duster, but whatever. All right. And I know this is probably not the right way to unstatic it, but this is, this is how I'm doing it. Um, and I know it'll work. I'm getting my scissors and cutting this package. I'm gonna touch something metal before I touch this. All right, so here is the hard drive. I'm gonna go ahead and place it in here and it should snap. If I remember correctly, it just snaps in place. So you actually have to put this label aside in this way and then it'll actually fit. So just so you know, um, that, that side right there goes near the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put these things back. Um, basically, this you, if it doesn't fit right, it's probably a warning to you that you're putting it the wrong way like I did, okay? So there's that. And one thing I want to explain is that if you are using hard drives, you would probably want to uh, basically get a hard drive that is bigger than the last one that you put in uh, because you can't put anything smaller if you're expanding. So if you have a two uh, terabyte, you need to go two terabyte or higher the next time you add another hard drive. So that's something that you should be aware of when um, adding a new uh, hard drive to your NAS. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the machine and um, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe blow this air out a little bit. Oop, in there, now that I've cleaned it out a little bit. Okay, now it is in and I'm gonna go to my computer and show you what it takes to kind of set it all up. Um, this video is based off of you already setting up your DSM, your Synology. I'm just gonna show you how to go ahead and add a new hard drive um, to your Synology, not necessarily set it all up. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. And look, the light is green. So 
let's go to the computer. All right, so I did go to the computer, but my screen was only recording a quarter of the screen, so I apologize. Um, it's really easy to set up, so I'll just show you guys at least what I captured and maybe kind of try to repeat uh, what I tried to do, but without an extra hard drive, I can't really show you guys the wizard with the full screen. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm signed into my Synology now. I'm going to go ahead and go to Storage Manager and then go to Storage Pool and then click on Action and then hit Add Drive, Add Drive number 7, click Next. All the data on the newly added hard drive will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Hit OK. And it says total capacity is going to be around 27.26 terabytes after adding it. So I'm going to hit apply. And then it should start doing its magic. So you log into uh, DSM, which is Synology's like operating system uh, for their network attached storage like device that you're using. So logging in, what you want to do is go into like the menu option, which is generally on the top left, go to storage manager, then go to storage pool. And then there's like an action button and you want to hit add drive. And it takes you through all the steps. Like the wizard is super, super easy. I have the Synology set up as a RAID format. The reason why I do that is just in case that one of my eight hard drives like fails, I would be okay because it will rebuild the files that were on the failed drive. So that's one reason why you'd want to set up as a RAID. However, the downside is that um, instead of having the full capacity of let's say, I don't know, your eight terabyte hard drive, you might have like six or four or whatever. So you won't have the maximum capacity of the hard drive because it's trying to do failover. It's because it's using some of that to do some failover across all those drives. So just something to be aware of if you do decide to do the RAID format. I also use um, Amazon AWS's Glacier uh, for my offsite storage. It's That's a whole different tutorial in itself, but what you need to know is that you have to sign up for an Amazon AWS account. Uh, when you go into the console, search for Glacier, set up all the things that you need to on that side of things and then get all the keys that you need go into dsm in synology and then go ahead and download from package center download a tool called glacier backup and then the wizard will walk you through what you need from the console to input into glacier so that you can have automatic backup because that's how i do my offsite backup and for my about 12 terabytes of files that i actually store off-site um, it cost me about 10 to 12 dollars a month which is not bad now glacier is cold storage which means that you know you go ahead and push data out there but when you need to pull that data it's actually going to incur a larger cost uh, because again it is off-site storage and um, I'm only paying pennies for storage in the cloud which is great for like 12 terabytes of data so when I need to pull then um, it's gonna cost me a bit more money uh, which is fine because that should only happen in rare occurrences God forbid anything happens uh, to my network attached storage at the house. So there you have it. That is how I use my Synology device at home. I apologize for not being able to show you guys at least a holistic view of how to add the hard drive, but it's super easy, I promise. Um, I was a non-techie whenever I installed that and it was really, really easy for me. It's been working really well with my uh, MacBook devices, being able to use it on my iOS phone. Uh, I haven't tried it with an Android uh, phone yet or nor I will I in the future just because I'm sold on the iOS uh, system just because everything talks to each other so that's neither here nor there for a debate. Other things I wanted to highlight about Synology is Video Station and Note Station. These are two apps. Uh, Video Station it can be downloaded on your phone and also on the Roku device so that if you store files, let's say in a uh, folder for just personal videos or whatever videos that you want, um, you can actually play it via an app on your phone as well as on your TV, which is really, really nice. And then Note Station is a uh, basically a replacement of Evernote. So you have your own server. Obviously, you can run anything you want on there, but they have like this app called Note Station that if you have Evernote or OneNote, uh, that is a different application that you could use that's stored on your own server. So there you have it. Those are the things and tips that I would share with you uh, with what I use the Synology for. It's been great just to be able to offshore data from my computer to my hard drive so that I don't have to mess with it. And if I actually really need to use it like real time, I actually copy it to my um, external hard drive that's attached to my MacBook just because I need the speed because my network doesn't have the greatest speed to be able to edit video from my network attached storage. So I actually have a USB-C hard drive that I copy from the network attached storage to the uh, USB-C so that I can edit from it. 
um, because I would not recommend editing from your NAS. I would definitely recommend it if you need to offload a lot of content uh, somewhere. The network attached storage has been amazing for it. The speed's been phenomenal. Um, I can't complain. Again, I have the DS1815 Plus. Um, that's probably an older version now because I've had it for a couple of years, but it's been great. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment below. Again, I am so sorry that my video got cut off, but I promise you it's really easy to set up. Um, I walked you guys through the steps. Just follow the steps and um, you can easily expand your hard drive. Any questions, leave a comment below and click on the subscribe button if you want more videos like this where I share tools and hacks to make life at home with technology a little bit easier and also tools and tricks that make my life more productive at home and also at work. All right, take care guys. Bye.